Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Thank you for joining me for another QuickBooks Online tutorial. Today, I'm going to teach you how to record a bounced check in QuickBooks Online. There's no advanced feature for recording a bounced check, so it's going to be a fairly complex process. I encourage you to pull up our online tutorial homepage by Googling Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Tutorials. We'll be going through several steps very briefly, and these are steps that you've learned in other tutorials. And so having the home page open will help you quickly find more information. So let's get started. Let's start on our QuickBooks dashboard. So recording bounce checks involve several steps, and so we're going to kind of follow an entire process so you can see each step uh, of the recording process. So let's start by recording the check as we receive it. This is the check that will eventually bounce, but of course when we receive it, we don't know that that will happen. So let's go to Customers and Invoices and actually let's go Customers. This is from Aaron. Okay, so we have an open invoice from Aaron for $240. So let's receive the payment. So again, if you don't remember how to receive payments, there is a separate tutorial on our homepage here under Managing Sales and Income, How to Receive Payments in QuickBooks Online. So we'll go over it quickly here. So we're going to receive the payment on this $240 invoice. Okay, Aaron is paying us. He's paying us by check. We'll say check number 100. We're going to deposit it to undeposited funds, $240. Save and close. OK, now we can see that the original invoice for $240 has been paid, so it is now closed. Now the second step in receiving payments is we have to remember to actually make the bank deposit from undeposited funds. So let's go to New bank deposit. We're going to deposit to our Chase checking account and we're going to deposit this check that we've placed in undeposited funds for $240 so our bank deposit is $240. Great so we've received the check now and deposited it that will eventually bounce. If you need a refresher on how to deposit funds you can go into our QuickBooks Online Tutorials, Managing Banking Transactions, and How to Record Bank Deposits in QuickBooks Online. That'll explain more why we used that undeposited funds account. Okay, so now we've issued an invoice, we've received a check, we've deposited a check, and now we find out the check bounced. So we need to learn how to record that bounced check. A common mistake in recording a bounce check is to simply delete the check that was received. However, this will make it very difficult to reconcile your bank account because your activity in QuickBooks won't match the activity on your bank statement. Because your bank statement shows the check being deposited, shows the check being bounced, and shows whatever fees your bank charges you. So we need the activity in our QuickBooks account to reflect the activity that occurred in the bank account. So in addition to making reconciliation easier, this will leave the proper paper trail. Um, so in the future, we can see exactly what happened. So let's, how to, let's figure out how to record this bounced check properly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to reduce our bank account balance, right? Because this check uh, bounced for $240, and so now our bank balance is $240 less. The other side of that transaction is now Aaron owes us $240 again. So let's record that. And we're going to record this as an expense. So let's go to New, uh, Expense, OK, under Payee, we're going to select Aaron, who is actually a customer. So it's a little bit odd to select a customer for an expense, but QuickBooks Online does allow it. We need to put this into our Chase checking account because, or take it from our Chase checking account because that's the account we deposited the bad check into. We will uh, keep the payment date the same. 
Our payment method is going to be cash. We're just reducing the cash balance. Good. So our category here, this is important. Our category, normally when we record an expense, we're going to choose an expense account here. But this time, we want to record the fact that Aaron now owes us money. So we're going to put the category as accounts receivable, which is an asset account. Accounts receivable. And we're going to describe it as record bounced check and we'll put the check number which I believe was a hundred and the amount was two hundred and forty dollars okay so what this is going to do this is going to it's an expense so it's going to decrease our checking account balance and it's going to increase our accounts receivable okay which makes sense because Aaron now owes us two hundred and forty dollars so let's save and close that Okay, so that's step one of recording a bounced check. The second step in recording a bounced check is to reopen the original invoice because they haven't paid the original invoice anymore. The check they used to pay it bounced. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into the check that we received originally for $240 and we're going to apply it to the new accounts receivable we just created freeing up the old invoice so that it's still outstanding. So let's go into this payment and instead of applying the $240 check to the original invoice, let's apply it to this accounts receivable that we just created with that expense entry. Okay, now we hit save and close. Are you sure you want to modify it? Yes. Good. Now we can see that the what it's calling the check, that's that expense entry we just created to accounts receivable, it's showing that it's paid, but the original invoice is now open, which is perfect, right? Because he owes us 240 and now by having the 240 he owes us reflected on the original invoice, he can see what he owes us money for, right? That original invoice. The third step in recording a bounce check in QuickBooks Online is going to be rec to record the non-sufficient funds fee or NSF fee that your bank charged you for having a bounced check. So most banks will charge you a fee. Perhaps you have such a great relationship that you didn't get charged a fee, in which case you could skip this step. But most banks will charge you a fee. So we need to record an expense for that fee. So let's go to new. expense and then we're going to choose the Chase Bank here they're the ones we may have to add them as a vendor okay the payment will come out of that Chase checking account payment date. Now down here for the, uh, we're going to record this under the items detail. So we've already set up a product or service for NSF fees. Okay, and the rate the bank charged us was $25. We're going to bill that to our client with a 100% markup, so we're going to bill our client $50, and that is not subject to sales tax. Okay, so we're recording a fee of $25 and we're recording a billable expense of $50. Okay, and so that's all set up under our NSF fee service item. And we'll talk about that in a second. I'll show you how that should be set up if you haven't already set it up. So we're going to record this expense, save and close. You must select a customer. Okay, so NSF fee, obviously we want to bill it, so we need to select a customer, and we're gonna bill it to Aaron. Great, so save and close. Perfect, okay. So now let's talk briefly about that item I used. Um, 
the uh, NSF fee item. So if you go back to our QuickBooks tutorial homepage, um, managing our items is part of setting up QuickBooks. So it's how to set up the products and services list. You can review that lesson 13. So it's uh, the second part, uh, lesson 13. Um, but let's look briefly at how we actually have this set up. So if we go up to settings, products and services lists, and let's search for NSF fee and edit. And here are the settings I used for this NSF fee. So it is a product service to my customers. The income from it is going to go into miscellaneous revenue. So this is what I charge Aaron. That $50 I charge Aaron will go into the miscellaneous revenue. Um, I purchase it from a vendor, so I have to pay the bank a fee. That's $25, and that's going to go to our bank service charges. Okay, so that's how you want to get your NSF fee set up in your product and services item list. Again, review that tutorial if you have to, um, but this is the information you'll need to use to set up that fee. So I'm going to save and close that. Good. So now we've completed three steps. We have one more step to complete um, for this process. So we want to bill now Aaron the NSF fee that we've recorded. Now this is optional. You don't have to bill your clients for it. Perhaps they're a really good client and so you don't want to upset them so you're not going to bill them for their balance check. It was an honest mistake. However, most instances you're going to want to bill your customers. So let's bill Aaron for this $50 NSF fee. So I'm going to go new. I'm going to go invoice. I'm going to select Aaron. Okay, down here, service date, I'll just use today's date again, product or service, and actually, um, over here, sorry, let's delete this line, notice over here we have our billable expenses, so by, on that expense screen, by clicking billable and entering Aaron as the customer, this billable expense now shows up in our invoice, when we go to create the invoice, so all we have to do here is click add, Boom, there we go. We show the NSF fee of $25 and the markup for $25. Okay, so we're gonna bill him $50. Uh, let's preview this, see what it's actually gonna look like. All right, and here you can see they do not, the customer doesn't see the actual cost versus the markup. All they see is the NSF fee of $50. And of course, whether you want to mark it up or not, that's all your choice. Okay. Another thing that you'll probably want to change, most most uh, companies are not going to give you a 1% net 30 on an, N, as an NSF fee. Um, they're going to say due on receipt. And the due date here is going to be the invoice date for 22. Okay. And there you go. There is your invoice to give to Aaron for his $50 NSF fee. In addition to this invoice, obviously you want to send him the old invoice again for $240, tell him his check bounce and that he needs to pay this $240 uh, invoice again. So save and close. Yes. And to kind of summarize where we're at, let's look at customers. And let's look at the detail for Aaron. Right, so Aaron has two open invoices. He has the original open invoice for $240, and now he has a second invoice for the $50 NSF fee. Great, and we have, we're done. We've recorded a bounced check and the related NSF fee in QuickBooks Online. I hope you found this useful. I appreciate you spending some time with me. Please Google QuickBooks Online Tutorials Fit Small Business to find that homepage where you can find 46 free QuickBooks Online tutorials. Thank you very much and you have a great day.